good morning, everybody. Uh, great to see you all here. I'm Aoife Tunney and I'm with the Creative Europe Desk Ireland, the Culture Office. And um, we're delighted to see you here uh, for this event, Creative Europe Focus on Architecture. I'm joined with my colleague, Katie Larry, who we both run the Culture Office in the Arts Council, and also with Leona Cully, who is our marketing manager, and she's going to be moderating today. Um, just to say that we're going to record the session today, so we would like if you could turn off your cameras and mute, mute yourselves until the end of the presentations. We've lots of time for questions at the end and actually during the presentations, if you if a question comes, just pop it into the chat and um, Leona will be kind of keeping an eye on that um, and sending you some information along the way, some links and, and things like that. Um, today we're looking obviously at focusing on architecture within Creative Europe and I'm delighted to welcome today our, the Policy Officer Hugues Becard from the De Directorate for Culture and Creativity, the DG Education and Culture at the European Commission, um, who I'll go into what, what Hugues Ug, um, is going to talk about in a moment and we'll also be hearing from Fanula Sweeney, so we're welcoming her, the Head of Film and Architecture with the Arts Council of Ireland. So we're delighted to be delivering today's um, event around architecture. It's kind of a new uh, novelty for us, specifically a focus within Creative Europe, which is great. Um, just to look at today, the, the running order. So obviously I'm Aoife Tunney. I'm giving an introduction with a brief overview around the new Creative Europe program. I won't go into too many specific details because Ugg will, will look more specifically at that in a little while. Um, I will look at some cooperation examples of cooperation projects which feature architecture. So they'll be interesting for the Irish organizations to have a look at those, um, specifically what partners were involved and how, what were the kind of subject matter of those projects. And I will look at Irish, architect, Ar Irish architects in the EU as they are participating in winners and, and um, nominate, nominees of the EU Contemporary Prize for Contemporary Architecture. Um, Ugg will also talk a little bit about that as well in his um, presentation. So we will then move on to our keynote speaker, who is Ugg Bekar, um, and he will talk specifically about the Creative Bureau calls, um, which are actually coming online as we speak in, in these few last few days and, and coming up to the, the official launch in June, at the middle of June. He will look at policy developments around uh, the expert group focusing on high quality architecture and built environment for everyone, um, leading in then to the new European Bauhaus and what that means for Irish organizations and, and architects. And then we will hand over to Fanula Sweeney, um, as I said, the head of film and architecture, the Arts Council, and she will talk us through the role of the Arch Arts Council in its supporting Irish architects, both nationally and internationally. And then we'll have time at the end for questions. So hopefully uh, we'll, we'll get you sparked up with some engagement at the end. So I'll invite you all to turn off your, your cameras um, and I will invite Ugg and Fanula back for, for their sessions. So just to open up about the Creative Europe Desk Ireland um, and what we do and what our work entails. So there are three offices, firstly, um, the two media offices, one in Dublin and one in Galway, and they work specifically through the media sub program and that is around audiovisual and gaming sectors. And then there is the culture office, as I said, myself and Katie run it. Um, and we are based in the Arts Council as our national host. And we work via the, the culture sub program. So we are a point, the first point of information and advice in Ireland um, to Irish applicants. We give assistance around the Creative Europe program. We promote the program at local, regional and national level. And that's through a series of events throughout the year, um, which we also promote on our social media on our platforms but any other kind of opportunities funding opportunities whether that's other eu programs or whether that's within specific projects running um, nationally we will also promote them through our social network uh, platforms so we collaborate with key sectoral stakeholders and agencies as with our event today, we're working closely with uh, Fanula Sweeney from the Arts Council. So we'll work with different agencies um, in our various different events just to get the expertise um, for the sector. 
Um, we expand, we have expanded co um, collaboration with Creative Europe Desk Network, and we have hosted a lot of uh, European Creative Europe desks in Ireland for various events. Um, and we have also been hosted ourselves in other Creative Europe countries. Um, and obviously that has been on hold uh, due to COVID, but we're hoping that that will be reignited soon um, because it is a great way, you know, for swapping um, information and ideas and opportunities. We do assist with partner search requests, and that is really key for building partnerships um, uh, and, and getting connections with other or like-minded organizations of, or organizations of interest in Europe. So we do help with that around building towards a cooperation project or other project applications. We do develop cross-sectoral partnerships and more recently we are um, joined with the media program on a number of events, specifically around cross-sectoral uh, funding opportunities. Um, and Ugg will, will mention them in a little bit, um, the, the new ones that are part of this program. So just quick, quickly looking at, I know Ugg will talk a little bit more about this, but what is the EU hoping to achieve? Just an overview what the funding for arts and culture is in terms of EU. So obviously it is a social and political aim for, um, for people to, sorry for just admitting someone there, so <clears throat> for, for people within the member states to feel cohesion and strength as, as, a, as member states, and um, that's economically, environmentally, socially, and politically. Um, so culture helps that strengthening the member states. It has intrinsic value, so it also obviously is really good for well-being and for that sense of being connected. Um, Ugg will talk a little bit more about the broader EU policy that is connected to um, the funding for arts and culture. And it really, when we're looking at it, we're looking at addressing the priorities that the programme have set out that are key for, for, the, each, for each funding strand. But how does that connect back sectorally um, to Ireland, to our national concerns and how we can bridge that with other countries? So that is part of the whole programme. And Ugg will look again more closely about the funding and what is available. But just broadly, we have an increase of the uh, budget up to 2.54 billion over the next seven years, which is amazing. And just because of COVID, it is front loaded at the beginning in the first few years. We've increased co-funding for cooperation projects. So I will talk specifically about that in a moment. And then we have the targeted sectoral approach, which is specifically for the architecture sector. We'll talk ag again about that in a moment. So I wanted to look directly at cooperation projects because they are a very, have a high rate of a successful applicants in Ireland. Um, and they, they really uh, fund a broad range of artistic and cultural activities, and they would really suit this area of architecture. Um, and also there is the funding that is ring fenced for it. So within the budget of 60.9 million, which is an increase of 30% on 2020, there is 10% of the overall budget allocated to sector specific priorities. And they are in literature, music, architecture, and cultural heritage. We did an event recently on cultural heritage, around cultural heritage, which you can um, get a, a video of it if you want to. Uh, we recorded it so we can send you through the link to that. Um, and cooperation projects are open to creator, creative and cultural organizations, NGOs, mu museums, local authorities, universities, etc. But what I would say here is that although they're specifically for organizations, they really turn into funding hubs for artists and cultural professionals. So that even though they are working across uh, borders within Europe with various partners, uh, they do work very much on the ground nationally and locally and regionally. Um, and they have those connections and those funding opportunities for artists through open call uh, opportunities to through transnational mobility opportunities for residencies with those other partners um, within the project and through project commissions, workshops, professional development and all these other opportunities that come up within these, you know, two to four years of a, of a project. So do keep an eye out for those opportunities within um, projects. They do fund a broad range of artistic and cultural activities, as I send, said, and they fund staff time and core costs and limited overheads. 
And as we see them, they um, obviously they need to be connected to what your organization's activities are, but they can be seen as a developmental um, kind of opportunity for an organization to carve out this time to have multi-annual funding over a number of years. Uh, to do that research, that planning, and that embedded project um, in a specific area. So they are very, very useful for, for projects also getting connected within Europe. Mm. Um, so we look at the new categories within cooperation projects. Um, so there used to be category one and category two, and now we have three categories. Um, we have now the new medium scale uh, projects. So category one uh, is up to 200,000 euros. 80% um, of that budget is directly financed, co-financed from the commission, from your grant, and the, the, then leaving 20% for national funders. So that is great, it has been increased. Um, the minimum is three partners from three countries. Category two then is a medium scale project. So this is the new uh, category and it is up to a 1 million euro, 70% of the budget is, is directly co-financed from the Commission um, and that is with a minimum of five partners and five countries. And then category three is a large scale project up to 2 million. 60% of the budget is co-financed from the Commission with a minimum of 10 partners from 10 countries. So Creative Europe has set out these objectives specifically for cooperation projects um, and they are creation to strengthen the transnational creation and circulation of European works and artists, innovation to enhance the capacity of European cultural and creative sectors to nurture talents, to innovate, to prosper and to generate jobs and growth. And then more directly related to building a project, building an application for cooperation projects, these are the following priorities that you must at least uh, consider in detail. One of them, um, we would say that Ireland is very much kind of well placed in terms of these priorities for a lot of uh, projects already or, or organizations, they are working within social inclusion, within sustainability, within kind of audience development already. So this is great because um, these priorities are something that kind of would interest those organizations. Um, audience is a priority that was in, in the, the last program um, around development and increasing cultural access to audience, to a wider audiences, um, social inclusion projects for or of marginalized groups, encouraging intercultural dialogue, sustainability con contribution to the European Green Deal. Ugh, we'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. Um, the new technology, again, we had in, in the last program around a priority around technology, but obviously this is key to the moment we are living in a, a, now, um, how we kind of keep competitiveness within new technology. Um, international dimension, building capacity to be active, for organizations to be active and, and working at an international level. And then the sector specific priorities. So this is relating to architecture specifically, and it is around capacity building activities such as training, networking, market access activities and support to becoming more resilient. So more specifically within the focus on architecture in those sector specific areas um, and, and this relates into cooperation projects as well. Um, they're looking at focusing on communication, co-creation and mediation with citizens and relevant stakeholders in design, planning and building processes or the integration of European Green Deal and in particular new, Bauhaus, new European Bauhaus principles in their practices or the internationalization of careers in Europe and beyond. As I said, Ugg will talk more about the new European Bauhaus movement. Um, but I thought it would be interesting to look at a few cooperation project examples that focus on architecture. They are from the, the last program. Um, and it is always interesting to see what partners um, were involved, how they, what were the kind of subject matter. So this one is lessons from vernacular architecture and it's looking at vernacular architecture um, being a great resource, has considerable potential to define principles for sustainable design and contemporary architecture. Um, and the, the partners in that particular project were Spain, France and Italy. Um, and there was an, 
couple more cooperation projects so this one is connected things about future people and city cooperation project in 2020 on city thinking futurology art architecture technology and design and looking at different uh, new technologies in urban european urban urbanities developing concepts like smart city or smart communities so there's a lot of talk obviously about smart cities and smart living um, and the partners for this project were Norway, Sweden, Holland and Romania. Um, all of these projects have their own website, so you could uh, look them up um, and find out the different uh, partners. Um, <clears throat> and this is Tbilisi Architecture Biennial. I'm sure many of you are well aware of this. Um, so this was a cooperation funded project in 2020 and it looked, around, looked at individual and individualism and fragmented landscapes following the, the, the socialist system, the collapse, and how the urban areas in Tbilisi in particular were very fragmented and looking at that, bringing more common space back into it. Um, the partners were Germany, Ukraine, North Macedonia and Georgia. And then networks and platforms. So in particular, Ugg will look at uh, the, them as, as funding strands themselves. So there are funding strands for networks and platforms, but I just thought in relation to Architecture in Europe, the Connect Arc, which you, you probably are aware of as well, is a network for architects based in Brussels. And it looks at organizational development, strengthening the network in, or, in order to raise ACE members' awareness, ability to engage in EU policy and lawmaking processes, improving transnational mobility of European architects, professional capacity building. And, and networks are open to individuals and organizations and they're great ways for building connections, for potentially meeting future partners for projects and just being connected and involved in, in the sector across Europe. Um, here is one platform called Shared City. City sorry, I'm trying to move my thing. Shared Cities uh, Creative Momentum and that's a platform from 2016. Um, it was across 11 organizations in Belgrade, Prague, uh, Warsaw, different um, cities across Europe. And it looked at uh, space for architecture, art and ur urban design um, and bringing all those elements, mun municipalities and government organizations and active citizens, citizens together. Um, and finally, the last uh, platform is Future Architecture Platform, um, and this is based in Slovenia with members from all over Europe and um, it is very active um, and it looks at bringing in uh, the roles of architecture uh, with multidisciplinary emerging talents to um, high profile institutions like museums, galleries, published housing, biennials and festivals. Um, you may be aware of this one as well. So it, it is just a kind of a snapshot of the types of projects and the types of networks and platforms that have been funded through Creative Europe and the, the types of partnerships and how, how they might work um, for your own future benefit if you were looking to make an application for the cooperation projects. Um, as I said, Ugg will look more into the Mies van der Rohe Award, but just that um, from an Irish perspective, that obviously it is, it is great on a European level for um, recognizing um, excellence in architecture and highlighting European city, city, cities as models for sustainable smart cities, promoting transnational architectural commissions. Um, as we know, there, have, there are a huge amount of Irish architects who are working all over the world, not even just in Europe, but internationally all over the world. Um, but in a, in a, a EU, from an EU perspective, I suppose the prize has also, given a lot to Irish architects, uh, most recently Shaffrey Architects uh, winning in 2019 for 14 Henrietta Street. And at the moment we have uh, the nominations for the 2022 award and we have 18 Irish architects and projects in Ireland, Northern Ireland, UK and France. And there are some of the, the list of the architects who have been nominated. And it is for, for creative architecture, but also established architects and emerging architects together, um, which is important. Um, and finally, as I mentioned, there are the organizations for, um, are specifically kind of aligned for cooperation projects and networks and platforms, but specifically for individuals. Um, the Artist Mobility Opportunist Award has become a permanent action 
Um, we had recently four calls in two in music, one in architecture and one in, in heritage. And we had four successful architects um, were recipients of the award, um, which is great. Um, and the awards are, are really a light touch. They're kind of uh, easy in term, easier in terms of documentation and application process. Um, but they're a great way for testing ideas, for, for collaborating, for meeting those partners um, within Europe um, and developing partnerships and collaborations going forward. Um, so they're around production orientated residencies, professional development, international collaboration. In the past, there were other calls where seven Irish artists were also successful um, and traveled to Serbia, Germany, Portugal and Denmark. Um, we did have a recent opportunist um, event where around houses, which is uh, the opportunist houses, which is for hosts, for artists and cultural professionals. Um, and we can send the link around to that is still open at the moment. Um, but the next call for artist mobility is not until 2022. So quickly, briefly at the end, the timeline for the whole of the new program, including all those funding strands. Um, we, it has been adopted now. Um, the program will be launched in mid-June, officially the 17th and 18th of June. All the funding calls now are being launched slowly and surely. Um, we can send you around the link to that. Um, so you can keep an eye on the on the details of the calls. Um, the deadlines will be late in summer 2021 with decisions for December 2021 or early 2022. Um, and there is also, it looks like potentially a second deadline later on in, in 2021, if you needed a little bit more time developing those projects. So final thoughts, I'm just going to, um, you will get a copy of this PowerPoint presentation, but just a, a recap around um, organizations looking at potentially applying for um, European for Creative Europe projects. Um, we would always say to assess your organizational capacity, your activities might align with Creative Europe priorities, and that is great, but you really need to know that you have the capacity there. Um, and that could be developed within other relationships um, with local arts office, with um, other organizations or third level um, institutions. Um, also national uh, relationships are key in, in um, your funding opportunities to do that co-funding. Um, so to make those relationships with the Arts Council and other funding opportunities. Um, the European projects we said is a, we can see as a developmental kind of opportunity for for organizations over those long period multi-annual funding opportunities um, and we would we would say to keep in touch with us to sign up to our newsletters um, and maybe look at other European funding programs if if it doesn't seem like uh, these cooperation projects or creative Europe is not uh, for you so that is me that is the end of my presentation i'm going to hand you over to Ug um when he is ready um I am. hello and thank you um so would you like to share your your presentation when you can can you see it yes Okay, I just need to. Um, yeah. There we go. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Eva. Thank you for, for the invitation. I think it's the first time a Creative Europe desk uh, organizes uh, a meeting on, on architecture specifically. So this is uh, uh, very welcome and uh, a good timing, I must, uh, I must say. So good morning, uh, everyone. It's good to be back in Ireland, even if it's only virtually. Um, so indeed, I'm dealing with uh, with architecture in the Creative uh, uh, Europe program, but also in terms of uh, policy uh, developments. Uh, EFA has been very comprehensive uh, already in her presentation, so I, I will quickly uh, highlight a few a few points to supplement uh, presentation, and then I will dive into the, the, the policy developments and the new European Bauhaus. 
Um, so basically, uh, uh, you know almost uh, everything about the uh, culture uh, strand of the creative uh, uh, your program. But actually, the, the, the program is, is uh, even broader than, than that, since uh, there's also a, a film uh, component, uh, which is uh, embodied by the, by, by the media program. And also, actually, a cross-sectoral uh, uh, strand, uh, we, we, which is very uh, relevant, uh, including for the New York and Bauhaus, uh, since this is about, uh, actually, a multidisciplinary uh, uh, approaches and cross-sectoral uh, uh, cooperation. So for all uh, cultural and, 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 and creative uh, uh, sectors. Um, so in a way, we have a two-track approach in, 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 the, in, in the program, we, we, which is about uh, cultural uh, diversity and uh, cultural uh, uh, heritage, the common cultural uh, heritage uh, we share in, in Europe. But there's also a more uh, economic uh, dimension with actually uh, the, uh, the support to the competitiveness of uh, the cultural and creative sectors. And this is a, a bit the two, uh, the two, the two tracks we, we, we try to, to, to follow at the same time. Uh, to do so, we have an increased budget uh, indeed, which is, uh, which is a very, very good news. Uh, this uh, actually translates uh, into an increased budget for, for culture this year, but actually the increase will even be bigger next year uh, for you know, budgetary uh, reasons. Uh, so this is uh, obviously uh, very much needed by the cultural and creative sectors after such a long uh, crisis, which is not over yet. So we hope that this uh, actually increased uh, support in the first years of the, the, the program will help uh, uh, the, the sector uh, recover. Of course, the budget needs to be shared between uh, among all these trends, and culture uh, usually gets uh, uh, one third of the of the of the whole pot. But uh, this is uh, already a substantial uh, uh, increase. Um, so, as far as uh, culture is, is concerned, uh, what we've tried to do uh, with this new program is actually to link it uh, more closely to uh, the the cultural policy uh, developments at uh, at EU level. And actually, uh, we have uh, uh, like a, a policy framework, which is the uh, agenda for culture. Uh, this is now the second version, which was uh, adopted three years ago, and which uh, tries uh, actually to uh, to link the support to to, to culture to more uh, actually to broader objectives, uh, such as the European Green Deal, of course, which is also very, which is very relevant for architecture, but also uh, the new European uh, Bauhaus. Uh, then the social economic uh, dimension, uh, of course, the competitiveness, but also uh, including uh, 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 social uh, inclusion uh, dimension, so that uh, everyone can uh, benefit from from from, from this uh, um, competitiveness. And then, of course, the digital uh, digital Europe uh, and the digital sing single market, which is a, an important uh, uh, component of uh, of uh, EU po EU policies. So it, it means that the support uh, to, uh, to cultural and creative sectors uh, contributes to a, a number of uh, uh, broader uh, uh, objectives, uh, including actually uh, emerging priorities uh, like the new European Bauhaus, uh, which I will uh, detail uh, in, a, in, a, in a moment. So the, the, this is the, the, the general policy framework, if you, if you wish. So for those uh, of you who uh, knew the former program, these are the main, uh, uh, let's say, uh, novelties. Uh, the sectoral approach, uh, which has been mentioned already, uh, a reinforcement of the international uh, dimension, which will be in a way uh, mainstreamed uh, throughout uh, uh, all calls. Um, and then actually uh, creative uh, innovation labs, uh, as I was uh, mentioning, under the cross-sectoral strand, to uh, actually mobilize uh, different uh, approaches and uh, uh, sectorial uh, uh, knowledge uh, to, to, to develop new new ideas and new and new processes. And then the mobility of uh, artists, uh, which, which was mentioned by uh, EFA, so under iPortunus, uh, which was actually a sort of pilot scheme, but uh, which will be now uh, integrated into the, uh, the full uh, uh, program uh, as of next year. And this is uh, one way uh, one of the ways uh, we uh, actually test uh, new ideas and uh, new uh, new types of support uh, before actually mainstreaming them into the uh, the general program so if you um, are beneficiaries or if you intend to to uh, to apply uh, you will see that we've tried to 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 simplify uh, a few uh, elements uh, 
through the use of lump sums and multi-annual contracts, uh, but also, uh, as I said, to help the, uh, the recovery of the sector, uh, an increased uh, uh, rate of uh, co-financing and including of pre of pre-financing to uh, facilitate the access of uh, smaller structures and to help kickstart uh, new uh, new projects. Um, if I've already mentioned the, 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 the various uh, action lines, uh, so maybe uh, a word on uh, platforms and networks. Uh, networks are usually sectoral networks. And one was mentioned in the field of architecture. This is the Architects Council of uh, Europe, which uh, actually uh, became a beneficiary only a few years ago to actually uh, develop the cultural dimension, actually, of, uh, of, uh, of their work, which was not the case before. Uh, so you will see that this goes in line with, uh, with, with policy developments. Uh, platforms are actually more about uh, uh, the promotion of new talent, of uh, emerging, uh, emerging uh, talent in uh, all possible fields. And the, the example we have in the field of architecture is this future architecture platform, uh, platform based in, uh, in, in Slovenia. Uh, well, for your information, we also support actually the translation and circulation of, uh, of books uh, in, in Europe. And this new uh, action line on pan-European cultural entities is actually focused on the uh, orchestras, but uh, with young uh, uh, musicians, uh, with young, uh, young talent. Um, so as far as cooperation projects are, are, are concerned, for the first time ever, so we have this sectoral approach, including for, for architecture. Uh, you've seen the three action lines, uh, the three topics we, we have identified for the first year. So the, the first one is really more about the, actually the, the, the brokering role of, uh, of uh, architects. How can they better communicate uh, not only with, uh, with, with, with users, uh, citizens, uh, uh, local authorities, but also in a broader sense, uh, actually um, try to uh, uh, develop a, a, a culture of, of architecture, uh, raise awareness uh, about, uh, about the role of, uh, of, uh, of architecture. And then, of course, the, the European Green Deal and European Bauhaus uh, have a number of, uh, developed a number of uh, principles. Uh, which we would like uh, 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 architects to, to, to embrace and take on, on board in their, in their daily uh, uh, practices. And this is also linked with the Davos quality tool I, I will mention uh, uh, a bit later. So this is more about uh, sustainability, but also quality principles, uh, actually, in, in architecture. And then the international dimension, as, uh, as I was saying, because we realized that actually it seems that 20% of architects uh, uh, make part of their studies abroad. But then in the end, only uh, maybe six or seven percent of architects uh, do, do work in a, in, a, in a foreign country uh, uh, in Europe, and it's even less uh, beyond Europe. So uh, we felt there was a need there maybe to uh, facilitate uh, actually the circulation of, uh, of uh, architects and uh, uh, cross-border cooperation. So these are the priorities we've identified uh, for, for the sector uh, this year, and so we are looking forward to receiving uh, uh, relevant applications, uh, so on the basis of the of the rules for cooperation uh, projects, uh, which uh, which EFA presented uh, just uh, just uh, just before. Um, so let me now go move to uh, to the policy developments because uh, you will see there's a, a coherence uh, between uh, all these uh, uh, developments. Because until now, basically, we've had actually the uh, uh, let's say that the EU Prize for Contemporary Architecture, or Ms. van der Rohe Award, was uh, our main tool to promote quality architecture. And uh, it, it's, still, it's still the case, of course, but uh, let's say that over the last uh, three years, there's been a, a rapid uh, uh, policy uh, development. Um, but even three years ago, we, we didn't start from, from, from scratch. So I would like to recall very, very, very uh, quickly actually uh, some uh, policy documents that were adopted uh, by member states uh, actually uh, uh, in, in regards to, 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 to architecture. And the first one was this council resolution 20 years ago already, so it was uh, on, on the agenda. Of course, these documents are not uh, binding, but they can be an inspiration actually for, uh, for member states. And uh, we can argue that uh, actually uh, those documents uh, had some effect because, uh, as you know, more and more countries have uh, adopted uh, architectural policies or guidelines on, uh, on uh, uh, architectural uh, uh, quality. 
And then actually seven years later in 2008, there was actually uh, uh, another uh, such uh, uh, policy document ad adopted by member states on already actually the contribution of, uh, of, of architecture uh, to sustainable development and a high quality living environment. So you see that uh, actually some keywords were, were and concepts were already present uh, then, but of course, uh, Times uh, have changed, and uh, these issues have now gained uh, a more uh, uh, pressing uh, uh, meaning. But uh, let's say that uh, the, the, the milestone for, for us, at least in recent times, was actually the adoption of the Davos uh, Declaration three years ago, uh, entitled Towards a High Quality Bokul Tool for Europe. So I know that not everybody likes uh, the term Bokul Tool, which is uh, indeed uh, uh, a Germanic uh, term, but uh, the declaration uh, was really uh, instrumental in actually uh, uh, stressing the cultural, uh, the, the central role of culture in, in, in the built environment. Uh, because when we say Bokul too on built environment, it's not only architecture, I mean, it's also public space, uh, landscape, even infrastructure, heritage. So this is this uh, uh, holistic approach. Uh, that uh, we are now trying to uh, to promote, and when we talk about uh, architecture in this context, uh, it's of course not only about uh, functionality uh, and uh, and beauty, uh, which are important, of course, but it, 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 it's also uh, to be seen as a as a as a way to contribute uh, actually to social cohesion, uh, sustainable development, and in the end, quality of life and well-being of citizens. And, and, and this is very, very important for, for, for the next steps. So uh, one can say that it, that it was actually the, the starting point of new uh, policy developments at, uh, at, uh, at EU level. And actually this was uh, uh, translated uh, into the new European Agenda for Culture, our policy framework uh, uh, I, I, I mentioned, uh, because uh, for the first time actually, in a work plan for culture. So the work plan for culture are, are, are actually the tools uh, we use to uh, translate the European agenda for culture into concrete uh, concrete actions. And of course, we have at, at the EU level, we have limited uh, uh, competencies in the, in the field of culture. So it means we cooperate with, uh, with member states. And in that context, we, we have developed uh, what we call the open method of coordination with, with member states, uh, through which we identify joint priorities on which we, we then uh, uh, decide to work. And uh, in uh, 2018, actually, one of these uh, priorities uh, was cohesion and well being, uh, under which uh, it was decided to set up a, an expert group on a high quality architecture and built environment for everyone, which is a sort of translation of a vocal tool, if you, uh, if you wish, or at least inspired by it. So it was the first time that actually member states. Uh, nominated experts to uh, uh, discuss uh, uh, the role of uh, uh, architecture and how to find actually uh, uh, the, the, the right balance uh, uh, among all its uh, dimensions and again for, for, for the common good. So in, in, in that context, uh, actually, uh, member states uh, nominated actually up to 39 experts, so two experts per country. Uh, Ireland uh, nominated uh, one expert uh, who is uh, Nicola Matthews. Uh, who is actually part of the core team, the core drafting team. So she, she, she's been very, very uh, valuable to, uh, to the work of the, of the expert group. And, and basically those experts meet uh, six times in, in, in this case uh, to, to, to exchange information, but also good practice uh, with a view to drafting actually a, 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 a report, uh, which will include the case studies, but also policy recommendations. Um, so it's of course a, a, a very good timing. Uh, we are now uh, working on the final draft. Uh, the, publica the publication should be uh, uh, available in, in, in September. And what is also uh, very good is, is that there will be a policy uh, actually follow up because once again, the, uh, actually uh, the Slovenia, uh, who will have the presidency in the second half of this year, will propose uh, council conclusions on uh, high quality architecture. Uh, so this is an interesting uh, policy follow-up and uh, actually uh, a major uh, event on architecture with two conferences uh, in early October will also be organized to, uh, to take stock actually of, the, of uh, uh, all, all, all this work. 
and without uh, actually revealing what the report uh, will contain, uh, what I can say is that first of all, um, the, the the report uh, will take on board the Davos Vocal Tool Quality Tool, which is actually the outcome of this uh, Davos process, which started three years ago, and uh, which uh, actually uh, proposes uh, eight uh, criteria to define uh, quality architecture or high quality vocal tool. And uh, if not, if you've not uh, uh, read it yet, I, I really recommend uh, recommend it. There, there's a short version to describe actually and define all these criteria. So as I was saying, uh, functionality uh, is uh, is among them, uh, of course. Um, and the usual criteria we use uh, are more linked to governance, uh, economy, environment, functionality. But it's it's also important to uh, to take diversity. Uh, uh, context, uh, sense of place, and beauty into account, and and, and really the the rationale between this uh, uh, this proposal is to say that actually all all criteria are equally important and needs to be in a way met to uh, to 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 reach or secure uh, quality architecture. So this this will be part actually of the of the final report, but we will also try uh, to uh, operationalize those criteria. So, so that they can be used uh, by local and regional uh, uh, authorities who uh, uh, often are the, 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 the clients or commissioning uh, architectural uh, works. And then, as I said, uh, we also, we've also selected a number of uh, case studies to uh, uh, illustrate an, a number of uh, important topics, uh, such as uh, uh, the need to raise uh, awareness about uh, uh, architecture to create a, a, a culture of uh, uh, architecture, the driving role, obviously, of, uh, of public authorities, and um, and the need uh, actually also for skills development and capacity building at uh, at local and at regional level. Because one thing is to have, uh, of course, uh, uh, policy or guidelines on quality architecture, but then you also need, uh, in a way, the, the people, the staff, the, the the team to be able to implement uh, those. Uh, uh, those policies or those uh, or those uh, criteria, and for instance, uh, design reviews uh, as they are being uh, used in, in in Ireland have been one of those uh, inspiring uh, case studies. So, in a nutshell, th this is what the the expert group is uh, is about, and of course, we we we're looking forward to 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 the final report in in September. Uh, but actually, we are already in contact with the new European Bauhaus team because obviously this will be a major contribution actually to uh, to, to to the design of the new European Bauhaus. And the the Davos Quality Tool has, has actually already been presented to the new European Bauhaus uh, team, uh, who has uh, welcomed it and actually will actually uh, uh, use it uh, to 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 better define uh, actually its uh, concept. So this is uh, the right uh, moment for me to move to the new European Bauhaus, uh, which came uh, maybe as a as a surprise to. Uh, uh, to most of us uh, last uh, September, since it was uh, actually uh, proposed by the president of the commission herself, Ursula von, von, von der Leyen. So I will try to uh, actually outline uh, uh, what the, the ambition is, because this is a very ambitious uh, project, which was not predefined. So that's what is uh, also interesting about it. Uh, it it's, it's actually uh, an initiative that needs to be, to be shared. Uh, together, including including with you, and it's not it's still time to 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 do so. So basically, the idea is to uh, to to make the European Green Deal actually and not only uh, an economic and an environmental project, but also a cultural project. So to turn it into uh, something uh, positive, tangible for 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 citizens at all at all at at, at all levels. And as, as I was saying uh, about functionality, uh, it's not only about uh, uh, form and, and, and function, uh, but really we, we, we should also uh, take into account the, the, the social, the cultural and the environmental uh, uh, aspects of this, uh, of, of, of this motto. Um, so it, it's really also about the, actually the recovery after the, 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 the COVID crisis. Uh, which is not uh, which is not over yet, but the idea is to gather actually people from different uh, perspectives, different uh, disciplines, uh, including of course architects and designers who have uh, a major role to play, but uh, not only, also uh, researchers, uh, scientists, uh, obviously engineers, uh, and actually uh, any citizens who uh, want to, uh, to 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 contribute. 
And of course, the the ultimate goal is also to um, to, to develop new uh, design solutions, new tools that could be uh, upscaled or brought brought to the market uh, to uh, disseminate them uh, uh, wider. So to be uh, a bit more precise, um, the the new open powerhouse is is not an only about buildings or, or architecture. It's it's about placemaking actually. It's about spaces, the spaces where we live, we work, we. Uh, uh, we entertain our, uh, ourselves, but also the, the, the way we experience them and how we uh, actually, uh, actually ab about uh, more sustainable ways, way, ways of life. And, and, and that's why the, the triangle, if I, if I may say, of the new open bar house is it, really about those tri uh, three dimensions, sustainability, uh, of course, it's linked to the European Green Deal, uh, but also uh, aesthetics in, in, in a broad sense. So, including uh, uh, the, the 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 quality of uh, actually uh, uh, of life, of architecture, of, of experience, uh, and then the, the the social dimension to make sure that actually uh, such uh, you know new uh, solutions are accessible and affordable to uh, to to all. It 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 should not be uh, an initiative uh, you know for for the urban uh, elite and. Uh, Limited uh, to uh, to narrow uh, circles, uh, so this is this is the ambition, and to do so, uh, I mean the the Commission is trying to to, to create a movement, uh, a design movement, with all, uh, uh, all open to all contributions, uh, and that's why uh, actually uh, we are now in in what we call the the, the design phase, uh, which I I will, I will, I will detail in a, in a minute. Maybe just a word uh, on the on the structure to make it uh, a bit clearer to you. So the initiative came from the uh, from the president of the commission. Uh, we have two leading uh, commissioners on this. Uh, the one uh, dealing uh, with uh, with culture, Maria Gabriel, but also education, and research, and innovation. And then Elisa Ferreira dealing with actually regional development because of course the EU cohesion funds. Uh, will have a, a major role in, in a way to uh, to implement the new European Bar House at local and, and, and regional level. This is also just to show you that uh, actually the initiative is uh, led uh, by the Joint uh, Research Centre, but of course uh, a, a lot of uh, Commission services and uh, DGs are involved, including uh, 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 education and, and, and culture, of course. Um, the as part of the structure, there's a high-level uh, uh, roundtable with the uh, 18 uh, uh, experts uh, uh, who've been uh, selected uh, so through a, a sort of a half-open selection procedure, but I, I will not go into, in, into details, but at least they represent uh, various uh, sectors, various perspectives, so in this uh, multidisciplinary approach we, we want to have. And, uh, and by the way, we have an Irish member who is uh, Ola uh, Murphy, uh, whom you uh, you may know, and uh, so the, the, they're like a, a sort of a forum, inspiring uh, forum to uh, uh, actually uh, better define and uh, implement the uh, the initiative. So yeah, I was mentioning the the, the design phase because uh, the, the structure, the timeline is uh, in three uh, steps. So the design phase is really the one we are currently in, which is open to uh, to, to to everyone. And uh, the calls, the first calls to actually uh, support uh, implementation demonstration projects will will be published in, in September uh, for the second phase. And once we have some results, of course, uh, the idea is to disseminate them, uh, to share them more broadly, including uh, including beyond Europe. So very quickly to, to the design phase, which is still open until the end of June, where actually anybody can contribute, in particular architects, of course. And uh, by the way, among the, uh, the contributions we've, uh, we've received, uh, which are uh, above uh, 1,000 now, half of them actually come from the cultural and creative sectors and architects are, are very well uh, represented. So you are very welcome actually to uh, contribute in, in different ways. You can simply, uh, you know, share uh, 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 an opinion, uh, uh, a report, you can share pictures uh, uh, about what the new open bar should look like uh, according to you. Of course, if you have the capacity to, uh, to host a conversation, to organize a, a, an event with actually uh, uh, different stakeholders, so coming from different uh, sectors, not only architects, you're very welcome to do so, and then you can harvest the, 
uh, the actually the results of the of, of the conversation of the exchange and share them directly on the website of the of, of the new European Warehouse. So these are the different ways to to to, to contribute. Um, if you're part of a, of a network, uh, you are very welcome also to apply as a partner, as an official partner of the new European Warehouse. There's no uh, funding attached to it, but the idea is really to, uh, about promoting actually the, the values of the new European Warehouse, these three dimensions and contributing to uh, uh, to it through uh, through your, your your network or uh, through uh, dedicated uh, dedicated events and of course the partners will be involved in the next stages of the new open bar house uh, so in the final uh, design phase if i may say and also in the in the selection of the uh, of the prizes so so far there are, there are like 140 partners so you can see some of them they, 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 they all uh, so I mentioned on the website so don't hesitate to go there I was mentioning the the, the prizes um, so uh, they were launched uh, actually in April the deadline is now passed but you can see that most of the categories that have been identified are clearly uh, linked to to to, to architecture. Uh, so there will be a new edition next year, probably more future oriented, because of course we also need to ensure the complementarity with the EU price for contemporary architecture, for instance. Um, but uh, just to let you know that uh, this is uh, this is uh, this is underway. And then the final slide, because uh, I may have uh, talked a bit too much. Sorry about that. Uh, but uh, once actually. Um, uh, the sense making exercise of all the contributions received uh, has been done uh, so by the by the end of uh, uh, of summer by september uh, actually uh, so there will be a sort of communication uh, summarizing actually or taking stock of, of all the, the contributions trying to make sense of them identify uh, priorities and then publish dedicated calls for actually pilot projects to uh, uh, in a way demonstrate on the ground uh, the, uh, the the values of this uh, of this uh, new European bar. So this is still to be uh, uh, to be uh, to be defined. Uh, this is underway and uh, will be will be announced uh, mid September when the European uh, Commission President uh, will make a, a State of the uh, Union uh, uh, address. So you will know more by then. But the design phase is still open. So please feel free to uh, to to contribute. And I, and I will stop here. Thank you for your attention and patience. Thank you. I, I, yeah, <laughs> I lost myself. Um, thanks a million. That is so brilliant. I'm uh, getting all that information together. I know people have got more information than others and also their partners already involved um, from an Irish perspective in the new European Bauhaus, but just even having that all information together is, is really brilliant. Um, thank you. Um, and I'll pass you over to Fanula um, if you can share. Thank you. Yeah, there you are. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to get this a bit bigger. Sorry, it's not. Hold on one sec, if you don't mind. No worries. Yeah, there's always um, some tweaking. Always a minute. Yeah, um, it worked earlier. I think if you do the, 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 the button on the very right hand of your screen on the bottom. There we go. There, yeah. So, okay. yeah. Yeah, there you, you go. Okay? Off you go. Yeah, thanks. So thank, thank you, um, Aoife, for um, having us here today. Anug, it's fantastic to hear about the, this renewed focus on architecture within a European context. Um, I think it'll be great for everybody. And um, I hope that Irish architects and organisations will get very involved um, at the Creative Europe level and at the new European Bauhaus. Um, what I will do today is just very quickly, I think, um, give you a brief overview of the Arts Council's role and dream it in architecture, um, together with an overview of our supports for the architect and forthcoming funding opportunities. And more detail can be got from either myself or my colleague, Audrey Keane. Um, if you want to follow up and get more information afterwards. And of course, there's always the Arts Council website and the, um, our newsletter. And I'd recommend everybody um, um, subscribes to the newsletter to hear of any funding opportunities we may have. 
so to kick off, and I'm just if you're trying to find this now. Uh, sorry, yeah. So if if we um, start by just saying architecture has been a designated art form in Ireland since the first Arts Act in 1951. And that gives us a unique statutory responsibility for the development of architecture as an art form. Our role is a discrete one that is distinct to that of the Department of Housing, Local Government and Heritage, which has responsibility for developing the national policy on architecture. And many of you have probably been involved in the very broad ranging um, consultation process that, the, that Ness Roach and the department has been leading out on for that. We also share an interest in and responsibility for architecture with other state agencies, including the Office of Public Works and the Heritage Council, as well as local authorities and um, independent bodies such as the RIAI. Um, our architecture policy flows from our strategy, which is making great artwork and is focused on its policy priorities of the artist and public engagement. We are currently um, developing a new architecture policy for the Arts Council, and it's very much about championing architecture. It has an ambition to support the creative practice of architects to grow a valuing of architecture and to work in partnership with others to ensure that everyone everywhere benefits from a culture of high quality architecture in their everyday lives in Ireland. So we will be, um, we've been through a very thorough and sectoral consultation process around that. And we hope to be publishing that policy within the next few months. I think it will align really well with um, the national policy and also on um, the new European Bauhaus, um, which is fantastic that all these things will be talking to each other. So how do we support architecture? We do so by funding an, an infrastructure for architecture culture, by investing in those organizations that through their activities deliver to artists, that's architects and the public, and also through our own direct funding supports to architects. Um, so we fund the Irish Architecture Foundation, whom you'll all be very familiar with, and its full range of activities and programmes that deliver to diverse publics and architects. Um, we also um, provide funding support to the Irish Architectural Archive, which collects and preserves the material of the past and present relating to Irish architecture and makes it available to the public into the future. But we support others as well. Um, festivals such as Architecture at the Edge, which is growing year on year and is coming up very soon. Events such as Open House Limerick and exhibitions and programs of architecture. Again, coming up shortly is Carlo Arts Festival with its Engaging with Architecture program um, next weekend. Um, so it's through the work of all these organizations that the Irish public is presented with opportunities to critically engage with architects and architecture culture. So when we say we support the artist, what do we mean? We mean the living architect as artist and architecture graduate as artists. We are interested in supporting architects working across a diversity of forms of practice in architecture, including material and spatial, building and curatorial and socially engaged practices. And we wish to support architects in developing their creative practice at all career stages. Um, so we support um, architects indirectly through our funding supports to the organizations I mentioned above who provide opportunities to architects to make and exhibit work, to engage in critical discourse on architecture and to engage directly with each other and the public about architecture. Uh, and we support the creative practice of architects directly through our awards and schemes. And it's those I'll go on to talk a bit about now. But before I do, I think it's important to say what we do not do. And that is we don't, we're not concerned with architecture in a, in a commercial industry context. And by that, I mean, we're not concerned 
with the architect client relationship and architecture. So it's about developing creative practice outside of that. Yes, it may inform that, of course, but it's the creative practice of the architect outside of the um, client architect relationship. So um, in terms of our awards, we offer an architecture bursary award, and this provides time to architects and architecture graduates to think, research, reflect, and engage with their creative design practice. Um, individuals can apply for amounts of either 10, 15, or 20,000. We offer it twice a year in January and June, and the next deadline is next the week after next on the 24th of June. And I'd really like to encourage people today to look at that and also to look at our forthcoming um, Agility Award, which is a type of COVID response award. It's a new award for individual artists and arts workers. And it's designed to develop practice work skills or create new work or present new work. So it's very broad and um, it offer, it's a light touch award offering up to 5,000 euro. So forthcoming deadline on the 8th of July and the 9th of September. It can be considered like a mini bursary in many ways. So, um, and it is well worth looking at. And for somebody who maybe hasn't been through the Arts Council funding programme and the requirements, as I say, it's light touch and it is a good one maybe to start at, but it's available to everyone at all career stages, like everything we um, offer. We also have an architecture project award, award, which supports ambitious new work in or about architecture through the creation of spatial, material, or other physical work that has a reach and real and tangible output that can be experienced by a public. Um, we offer up to 70,000 euro at that. It's offered once annually a deadline of the 19th of August. Last year, we supported four, um, four awards um, through four project awards or five possibly. Um, and they'll be coming on stream in the next while. Um, it was an award we offered a number of years ago, but then due to resourcing issues, it wasn't offered, but we reintroduced it the year before last with one award, four or five last year, and we'd be hoping to do the same again this year. We have our Engaging with Architecture scheme as well, which supports ambitious, innovative and creative high quality initiatives, such as exhibitions, events, festivals and programmes of architecture. And this is specifically aimed at enhancing and extending the public's experience of and involvement with architecture. There are two strands to the award. One is a development strand of up to 5,000 and a second strand supports um, the delivery of projects um, that, that enhance and extend the public's experience of architecture and that uh, offers up to 25. You can apply for the research strand in one year and go on to apply for the delivery strand in another. Again, this is offered once annually and a deadline of the 19th of August. So we also support work in an international context um, and our, our work in that area, we partner with Culture Ireland on supporting the Venice Biennale, which is currently ongoing with Entanglement by Annex, the Annex um, Consortium. And obviously that is biennially. And we hope to be making the next open call for that in the second half of this year with Culture Ireland. So we're looking forward to doing that. Um, we then support the national tour of the exhibit. So audiences in Ireland are able to experience um, that, inter that work of international standing and its resonance for them in Ireland when it comes back. Um, also, we have offered a travel and training award um, in the past. You'll understand that we're not offering it at the moment, but I hope that will be um, made available again next year. Um, as we move out of the, the um, critical phase of the pandemic so that we can support architects to develop their practice in an international context. We have many other opportunities um, for artists, for architects um, and architecture organizations through 
various grant schemes such as Open Call, Next Generation, Strategic Funding, Markovich Award, Arts Grant Funding, the Festival Investment Scheme, Invitation to Collaboration and Touring. And I would encourage people to look at those as well and not, you know, because they do support architects and architecture organisations to make work. So it's always worth um, looking at those as well. Um, so that is it from me for now, but I would like to um, encourage you to make applications and to come to the team to, as I say, to Audrey or to me with any questions or queries you might have in terms of making applications to us. And I look forward to being in touch with you again in the next few months in various ways as we, when we publish our policy and um, our plans around that. So thank you. Brilliant. Thanks a million, Fanula. Again, really interesting, just the breadth of, of uh, funding opportunities available, um, obviously for artists, arch, artists as architects um, and organisations um, and, and more funding opportunities coming again with the Agility Award um, as well on stream at the moment. Um, and I might invite Ug back in um, and we could potentially, yeah, close out of your... Um, I'll stop sharing there for you, um, Fanula. Um, and if we have any questions, anybody, um, I'm not sure if anything came to the chat. I know we were sending out bunches of information there. Um, and if anybody has any questions, that do please um, come forward, make yourself known. Um, if not, we'll obviously, uh, we're, we're always here, myself and Katie, um, and Fanula will take as she says, uh, questions for the Arts Council for Architecture. Ugh, is here. He, he's only going to be here once. We might as well um, <laughs> um, have some questions with him. If not, there's obviously no pressure. Um, I'm trying to think, is there anything else we're missing to say? Um, yeah, Ugh, go for it. Yeah, maybe just to, to clarify one point because we, we presented actually the sector approach to, uh, to, to architecture, but actually if you have a project with uh, at least so two partners from, from, from different countries, uh, we, which is not in line with the, those three topics, you, you're still free to, to apply for a cultural cooperation project. I mean, because this is also a bottom-up process. Uh, so in a way you, you're free to propose something, uh, something different. But then in the sectoral approach, of course, we have identified a, a limited uh, number of topics. So it means that both, both are possible, so it's, it's still open. But uh, at least uh, we know for sure that one part of the budget will be dedicated to this uh, sectoral approach to, uh, well, not only architecture, also heritage, music and publishing. But uh, so there are two ways actually to, uh, uh, to apply. Uh, so don't hesitate to, uh, you know, to propose something different if uh, that's what you, you need or want. Yeah, absolutely. That's good to clarify. Um, and also we don't, as, as the information comes on stream, the guidelines and the, the calls specifically, we'll, we'll have workshops and application process information kind of days, myself and Katie. So we'll keep you posted on um, all that information and do get in touch anyway. Um, if you have any questions around the upcoming and the calls as they're released. Um, I was anything else, something just popped out of my head there as you were speaking, I can't remember it now. Um, yeah, Katie, is there anything else we're, we're thinking for the future is more so those workshops, those application processes? Yeah, I guess it's just to say to people, you know, if you're kind of thinking and you're you're planning and thinking strategically, the commission has front loaded the budget, um, you know, for the early calls. So if you are thinking about applying, you know, the next kind of at least the next two calls, it's a really good time to do so. Um, and then just again with the you know, e increased co-funding from the commission, it's really um, I think it really will make the program a lot more accessible.